It is a joy to be with you in worship this morning, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, first of all, um, there's some things coming up for the children and the youth of our church. They're in your worship guide, uh, but the music camp, the craft camp, and the skit camp. Um, are all for our children, and those will be wonderful opportunities for them. And then also we're excited that uh, our uh, middle school students will be going to Surf City. This is the first time since COVID, and that has always been one of those events in the life of youth ministry that not only is a great time, but it's really faith-forming and foundational oftentimes. So I would encourage you throughout your week, if you remember any of these events coming up, that you would lift them in prayer, um, not only the students who will be a part of that, but also the leaders that will be a part of that as well. Also, I did want you to know that during uh, COVID, Mike Benjamin passed away, Clyde and Nancy's son, and uh, we are having a service for Mike uh, this coming Saturday. There will be a visitation at 1030 in the gathering area, and then we'll have our service here in the sanctuary together. And uh, so just wanted to make you aware of that. With that, I would invite Dawn to come and lead us in our congregational call to worship. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely salvation is at hand for those who fear the Lord, and God's glory will dwell in our land. Holy God, you are our faithful lover, our generous parent, our patient teacher, our constant friend. We live by the hope of your promise, seek to follow your way, and rely on the gift of your spirit by whose power we breathe and move and pray. Amen.
The truth about us is this. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Yet God promises to pour out grace upon us, giving us the confidence to show ourselves as we are and be freed from shame. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin before God and one another. If ever faithful God, how often we turn away from you, yet you remain constant to us. We run from you, but you call us back. In our words and our deeds, we dishonor you, yet you still profess your love for us. We cut ourselves off from you and from others, but you will not let us go. Forgive us our faithless and fickle ways and increase our gratitude that we might grow in faithfulness to you for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. When you were buried with Christ in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God. By that power, we are made clean and set free to live with gratitude and love with zeal. As you have received Christ Jesus, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and abounding with thanksgiving. As we come to the passing of the peace, I want to remind us that infection rates are growing again, and we would ask you to pass the peace of Christ in the way that is most comfortable to you. Um, if you don't want to shake hands, just put your hands together in a prayerful manner and just offer a nod. The other thing I would uh, remind you of is last Sunday, I picked up Cami after working a 12-hour shift. And she said, it was wonderful today because her phone blew up with the peace of Christ be with you during worship. And so I would encourage you, if we've gotten out of the habit of passing the peace of Christ to friends and family and folks who couldn't be here, remember to do that, whether it's now or whether it's later in the day. So the peace of Christ be with you.
God of wisdom, you promise to give your spirit to those who ask. Overwhelm us with your word that we may know you more fully, love you more passionately, and follow you more closely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the second chapter of Colossians. Remember this portion of the story of God as it is recorded in the book we love. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Watch out that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come in fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by the removal of the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food or drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the body belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualifying you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, initiatory visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. And now Deanna will have a moment for children. Good morning, children of God, great and small. I was thinking about the passage that Dawn just read. The thing that stuck out to me, and I've got a different version here. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith. So I was thinking about rooted. And in John 15, 5, Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. So I was thinking about this. We have gardeners in the crowd. I kill plants. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? My dad was a botanist and I can't keep a plant alive. Whew, Tupperware. All right. I brought some grapes. Now, these are fresh from Festival, who does a very good job on their produce, I must say. But notice how healthy and beautiful they are. They're very juicy. It's like they were just cut from the vine. So when we're connected to Jesus through the vine, we're healthy and fruitful and productive. Now, this is a box of raisins. I accidentally got yogurt-covered raisins, they're chocolate, <laughs> which uh, I don't have a biblical metaphor for that. 
But raisins used to be grapes, right? Raisins used to be connected to the vine. But now they've sat out in the sun. They're shriveled up. I love raisins, but they're not the same as grapes. They're not as vital. They're not as juicy and beautiful. So I was thinking about how we keep in touch with Jesus. And, and we do this through prayer. One of the other um, lectionary readings for us today is in Luke, where Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. And I thought, what better way to show children how to keep in touch with God? So there are no children here today. I'm, I hope there are 50,000 watching. Um, but the children in your lives, pray with them this week. Um, show them how to pray. Um, show them how to keep in touch with God. And then they'll be fruitful, and they'll be healthy spiritually. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the words in your Bible that remind us to stay connected to you so we may be strong and fruitful and useful to you in your kingdom. Thank you for sending us Jesus to teach us this. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Over 2,000 years ago, the psalmist writes, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way of sinner, or sit in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on the law day and night, that person is like a tree planted by streams of living water, which yields its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither, where at whatever they do, they prosper. That was the first psalm that I memorized. It wasn't my choice to memorize it. It was mandatory scripture memorization in our house, but I've hung on to that psalm. And then, just about a hundred years ago, Joyce Kilmer wrote a poem entitled, Trees. And you may remember learning that in elementary school when I was reading an article or commentator and they lifted up this poem. I'm like, well, I have no idea. But when I heard the words, I'm like, oh, I remember that. Kilmer wrote these words. I think I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms in prayer. When you see a tree today, and we are fortunate to have so many trees around us, when you see a tree this week, remember that image of a tree gently lifting its branches in prayer. Now, I know we need to overcome that because as Presbyterians, we don't lift our hands very easily, do we? <laughs> but I love that image of lifting one's hands in prayer. You know, and maybe it's a practice that we might need to start, even if it's in the privacy of our own home. Or maybe we need to have the freedom when we sing together and we feel God's Spirit and we want to respond in some way, but it's not very Presbyterian, we can raise our arms together. As I was thinking about that, I was thinking about watching the trees yesterday during the storm. Did anybody watch the trees yesterday during the storm? Those look like Pentecostal trees, I'm just saying. <laughs> Kilmer's tree would understand the words of Paul to those living in Colossae. Live your lives in Jesus Christ, rooted and built up in Jesus, established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Kilmer was known for his poetry 
as he celebrated God's creation and his faith and drew them together. Unfortunately, his life was cut short by a sniper's bullet when he served in the United States Army and was awarded the French War Cross for his bravery. I can't imagine the poetry that would have come forth had his life not been cut short. In fact, there was a forest in North Carolina that still stands today that was named after him for his poem, Trees. Joyce Kilmer loved trees, and he gave us that beautiful image of lifting our hands to God in prayer. In modern depictions of this poem are often attached, you've seen the pictures, haven't you, that have those words, and what do you normally see? You see a solitary tree standing strong and healthy. But Kilmer knew that no tree is an island unto itself. In fact, in one of his verses he says, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the sweet flowing breast of the earth. This is not only a praying tree, but it is also a nursing tree. In other words, we never arrive, we are never finished growing and nourishing ourselves in the faith. Although we often think of individuals, trees are much more about community. More than a hundred years after Kilmer's death, Research reveals that there is a social cooperation between trees in a thriving forest. An article in The Atlantic, the ecologist named uh, Susan Simard has studied the underground networks between trees. And I didn't know this, but there are these fungal fibers that are not roots. They're fibers that connect trees, and they tie the roots together, and it's all beneath the ground of the forest floor. See, trees aren't lonely. Trees are deeply bound together. Seeing a tree standing alone is a modern function of landscaping. If you were to dig up the earth around a tree, you would find a network of those fungal fibers. And these fibers aren't much to look at. They're these kind of milky, pale, kind of inky, almost translucent. How many are gardeners here? And you know when you get those potted plants, and especially the ones that have been in their pot for too long, and there's those white fibers all around it, those aren't roots. That's what's being described in the ways that trees connect together. And these fibers help out in numerous ways. They carry water. They carry carry nitrogen. They carry They carry biochemical information. They pass information between the trees, between same species of trees and even trees of different species. And this community created in the forest and those little tentacles, those fungal tentacles have a scientific name, mycorrhizal. And they help supply one another's needs as they grow together. And the trees help the fungus by providing it with sugar. You know, and as I thought about that image... I thought about that that's the way we as the church need to be together. Not standing as lonely, solitary Christians out in the world, not being nourished or connected, but we need to be like a forest where there are these connections between us and we nourish one another. When... We were buried with Christ in baptism, says Paul in Colossians. You were also raised through him, through faith in him, by the power of God who raised us from the dead. 
Every bit of spiritual nourish we receive comes from our connection with God and to Jesus. God made you alive together with him. I love that he uses the word together. Not as an individual, but as a community of faith. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them. Faith, new life, forgiveness, victory over earthly powers are all supplied to us by Jesus the one who connects us to God, to Him and to one another. According to the ecologist Susan Samard, trees in the forest are engaged in a kind of mutual aid society, connected by the more causal. Resources are routed from trees in the sunlight And they grow in their shade. From trees, they have a surplus of water. And they give to those who are dehydrated. She has often found, she has even found that signals are sent from bug-infested trees to other healthy trees around them. And that whole circle of life is found in a forest community. Saplings are connected to the network, and they do well. But those who are disconnected fail to thrive. As an old tree reaches the end of its life, it will use those fungal linkages to give large amounts of carbon to its offspring. And there is a sense in which that parent tree is self-sacrificing for the betterment of those trees that are around them. Trees are not competitive organisms. Instead, each tree invests in the well-being of the entire forest, reaching out with those little fungal fibers. When he was writing to the followers of Christ in Colossae, the Apostle Paul sounded a great deal like the forest ecologist As you therefore have received Jesus Christ the Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him. Christians are not supposed to live lives as isolated individuals. That's why God gave us the gift of the church, because we are to be rooted in Christ, nourished by Christ, built up in Christ. According to Paul, Christians are linked at a very deep level to Jesus Christ when he acts as his people. We become a kind of mutual aid society gathered together in the church. Now we are not connected together by these milky, fibrous, fungal kinds of things. That would be gross. But when we are nourished by Christ, we share it with each other. We are rooted in Christ when we are rooted in prayer, not only for ourselves, but for others. And we find the words in Colossians to be true, that the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. We begin by being rooted to Christ first and foremost. There is nothing more important for our Christian formation, which begins in childhood and continues until our lives come to an end here on earth. I was so thrilled this morning when I walked in and saw the worship team as they were preparing because as I look at those young women up there, I remember Sunday school. I remember running around the church. I remember teaching their confirmation class. I remember them going to Surf City, going to Haiti, 
And this congregation reached out, supported, and helped develop their faith. And it's a joy when you can see the fruit of God at work among us, of us connecting together, helping root, ground, and build up. And that's a vision, not just for children and youth ministry, because, friends, we as adults need to be rooted, need to be built up, need to be connected so that we, too, can grow in our faith. The church helps families do this by helping them form the qualities that the Apostle Paul lays out in Colossians. Qualities of compassion, qualities of kindness, qualities of humility, qualities of patience when we live our faith out together. Then we communicate. We communicate with each other just like the trees communicated with those fungal fibers. We carry information between different parts of the body of Christ. This is sometimes done in face-to-face conversation, or sometimes it's as simple as a text saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And you have no idea how that can lift the spirits of somebody's day. As a faith community, we need to speak lovingly and truthfully to all of us. A journalist wrote in that way, they are one hopes like family. None of that is possible without the willingness to take a risk. To open oneself to a wounded ego, to slings, to arrows, a broken heart. When we do this, we try to take people at their word. We avoid judging them for what they are experiencing, and we make room for everyone's flaws and failures as we work to build one another up. Friends, I just want to take a quick poll this morning. If you do not have a flaw or a failure in your life, would you please raise your hand? Dave, is that your hand? Oh, no, you're fanning yourself. (laughs) But friends, we are all flawed. We all have failures. And yet sometimes we take it upon ourselves to point out the flaws and failures in other people, and we ignore the flaws and failures in our own lives. In the body of Christ... We need to receive and welcome one another, regardless of what we might be experiencing. For the purpose of nourishing, for the purpose of building up. As members of the Christian community, we invest not only in the welfare of individuals, but also in the well-being of the entire church. This involves the offering of our gifts, of our time, our talent, and our treasure, that we support not only the ministries of our church, but the ministries that take place beyond our walls. And when we do this, we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. When he sacrificed, not just for the sake of those who believed in him in that moment, but for those who would also come to faith so that the word may go beyond the church as they knew it at that time. And finally, we grow with a growth that is from God. The image of a forest is a good one to keep in mind when we think about the growth in the church. First, the forest is very much like the body of Christ that is described by Paul, that is nourished and held together by ligaments and sinew. Similarly, those fungal fibers that nourish and link trees together And then the forest grows deeper, sending its roots out and deep. 
They send them deeper so that we can be nourished by Christ. And then we send them out to our brothers and sisters in Christ so that we can be mutually nourished together. And then new saplings are created, growing deeper and larger. That is the growth that is from God. And we grow deeper when we study and reflect on the Scriptures and not just depend on me or whoever's preaching on Sunday morning, but when we take the time to encounter the Word of God on our own, God speaks to us in that place. I love it when the Scripture says that the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit to help us pray with sighs too deep for words, that our prayers are heard by God even when we do not have the words to articulate our prayers. We need to grow by planting seeds in the community around us and not just keeping it to ourselves. We need to share the good news of what God is doing in our lives. Not bragging or anything like that, but sharing this is what's happening in my life. Because we live in a day and age where someone's face-to-face testimonial of what is happening in your life will speak volumes, more than somebody else's podcast, a book, or latest article in a magazine. When we get to know our neighbors and truly care for our neighbors, it's an opportunity for them to come to know Jesus. And then we will be living a life that is rooted and built up in Christ and establishes a mature faith. So friends, I want to give us a little bit of homework today. And the homework is simply this. We're going to take a few moments of quiet. And I would invite you to ask God, are there three people in the life of our church that, you know, I should really reconnect with them? That I should reconnect with them to help us be rooted in Christ together, to be nourished by Christ, and to be built up in Christ And I would encourage you to share if there was something that stuck out to you in worship today, whether it's a line of the song or confession or something in the sermon or anything else, if there was something that was upbuilding in your faith, just say, hey, you know, I wanted to share with you. And you can tell them, first of all, that Taylor gave us homework on Sunday, so it's easier when you have homework. But I just wanted to share that with you. And I also wanted to know, is there any way that I can pray for you in this next week? Just a simple thing, three phone calls of someone in the life of the church asking them or telling them something you learned in worship or that helped you, encouraged you, and then asking if there are any ways that I can pray for you. Is that reasonable homework? Okay. And then if you want to, I don't want to hear any names, But I would love it if you shared with me what happened so that I can share it with the congregation. We don't need any identifying features because I think if we are faithful in doing this, we will be surprised how God works and helps us connect with one another. So let's take a few moments and ask God, who is it that you are placing on my heart to give a call, to encourage, and to pray for in this week? And then the worship team will lead us in song after that.
be of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one we could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one we could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
salvation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Would you please be seated? Holy God, we come before you this day, grateful for your presence in our lives, and we are grateful that our relationship with you is so abundant. And we thank you for sending Christ into our world so that we might be saved, so that we might be planted, so that we might be nourished, so that we might be built up. But holy God, so often we think of our relationship as just being with you. But you called us to something far greater than that. And I pray that as we have read your word and reflected on your word today, that we will have seen the importance of how we are a community of faith together. May we reach out to one another so that we might help root one another deeper in Christ. May we call with that word of encouragement, that scripture that is needed at that moment. Holy God, may we listen to your Holy Spirit when you lay it on to our heart to give somebody a call, to say a kind word, to do some form of action that you are calling us to do. Holy God, help us not only hear your Holy Spirit, but then act on how the Holy Spirit is guiding us. Holy God, we thank you for nourishing our faith, for building us up. And I pray that we too would be a people who nourish not only those who are gathered together in our church, but also those who are beyond our walls. Holy God, we live in a society and a culture where we are much better at tearing something down or tearing others down I pray that you would give us the discipline and the words in our lives to not tear others down, but to build others up. I pray that you would call to mind those individuals in our lives who made it a point to build us up and to remember how we grew because of that. Holy God, may we always be reminded that we exist because of you, and that our sole purpose is to worship you, to be rooted in Christ, to be nourished in Christ, and to build up the kingdom of God. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the king. Thine is and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, there are so many ways I could talk about generosity this morning. And one of the ways I already mentioned in my sermon is just this church's commitment to young people, uh, both those, you know, who are younger than middle school and high school. And we had the privilege of seeing those folks back 
and helping lead us in worship today. And that in part comes not just from the generosity of our finances, but for those who year after year taught Sunday school and didn't just teach Sunday school, but loved the children in their class. Those who volunteered to go on a mission trip or go to Surf City with our students so that they could experience that, but then also experience faithful adults who are working to build them up and help them develop their faith. So this morning, as we give of our tithes and offerings, let us be reminded that our generation, I mean, our generosity gets passed down to the next generation, and we do actually become like a forest, connecting, building up, and growing into Christ. God, we thank you for the gifts that you have blessed each one of us with. And I thank you for the generosity of your people, for the building up of your church. I pray that you would take all that we offer from our financial resources, our time, from our gifts that you have given to us. We ask that you would take all that we offer and use them for your good purpose, not only in our church, but in the community around us and around the world. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
have you lead with us. Thank you. Friends, our scriptures tell us that the steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Friends, go in peace, confident of the promises of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.